from SBHirebeingAlliance.com. Corey Good and David Wilcock under attack. Dark Alliance in panic mode, threatens Good's family, David Wilcock's life, and legal entrapments. Excerpts from Corey Good's blog exposing attempted blackmail, threatening emails and messages from Cabal Stooges working for the elite government. Death threats, by phone and in writing. Blackmail efforts for over a million dollars. Possible attempted murder by sabotaging car brakes. Anonymous calls to Child Protective Services saying my children are in imminent danger. All worldly possessions of a fellow insider, Pete Peterson, being illegally seized and sent to the dump, causing losses in the millions. Armed policemen, protecting the crime, with the homeowner guaranteed 90 days in jail if he comes within a mile of the operation. Simultaneous seizure of his truck, leaving him with no transportation. When I woke up the next morning, I noticed that David had sent me a few emails and Skype messages. He was describing the hack attacks that were occurring on his website after publishing his article. He stated that a person had left a comment on that article claiming responsibility for these aggressive and damaging hacks. The person threatened to release a data dump that would ruin us both if David did not make a grandiose, public dumping of me, cutting all personal and professional ties. David had already privately informed me about being threatened in an extremely similar fashion through one of his once trusted insiders on the phone, as of July 3rd. Some of the same phrases were used in both threats. This showed that the Jack Smith message was related to the threat David had received by phone. This formerly trusted insider told David that a major campaign was underway to take Corey Good to the slaughterhouse. David was told that his career would be spared if he would reject me in a public way. He was also told that if he did this, he would be rewarded with rapid career and wealth growth. This incident shocked David very hard, as he had established a friendly rapport with this individual over a number of years. This insider stated that the information I was releasing about the military-industrial complex research and development bases in Antarctica had to be discredited. The R&D that is being carried out in these locations is said to be of the highest security clearances and most sensitive domains in terrestrial matters. On Tuesday, August 8, just three days after David's article went live, I found a strange email in my personal inbox. In this email, the sender identified himself as Jack Smith. By this point, everyone knew this was the alleged hacker of David's website. He was now claiming that he wanted to come forward as a whistleblower and expose the full nature of the operation that he was involved in conducting against us, on behalf of a powerful group. This group obviously appeared to be what we have called the Cabal. He said this information sharing would be very dangerous for him to do, and that he wanted us to sign a non-disclosure agreement, NDA, for his protection. I forwarded the email chain to David and asked his opinion. In the meantime I was waiting to hear back from Jack Smith with some proof that his claims were true. He had discussed a well-coordinated plan to start a civil war in ufology. He discussed the use of drone accounts in social media to inspire others to join in on these attacks, without realizing how they were being organized and manipulated. Jack Smith forwarded me one of the emails that had been sent to a prominent researcher. I had already seen a copy of this exact email from one of my sources, without it ever being made public, so I knew it to be genuine. The person who had hacked David's website was now asking us to sign an NDA before he would share any further information. David has quite a lot of experience with contracts and immediately found a number of booby traps that were added to the NDA. This person wanted to pass along data to us as confidential information for us to then leak to the public. He also wanted a legal guarantee that he could withdraw this information at any moment after he had already passed it along. As you know, once information appears online it is virtually impossible to take it down. We would have to agree to be subject to the courts in Denmark and agree to pay over a million US dollars per person in penalties, 900,000 euros each, if we could not get the information removed. He himself could easily own one of the websites that would then refuse to take the information down. Thanks to the sophistication of his hacking skills, we would never be able to prove it was him. 
Section 8 indicated that even 900,000 euros might not be enough to satisfy him if we could not remove the information. It would have forced us to agree that the damages we might pay to this man were potentially unlimited. That could extend into our property and anything and everything we owned. The 900,000 euros alone could have us both indebted and severely impoverished for the rest of our lives. David's final thoughts as he finished reading the document summed it up nicely. David Wilcock, this is absolutely the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my life, purporting to be a legal document. If I bothered to show this to an attorney he would be laughing so hard that I would have to get him to calm down before he could tell me run. Corey Good, K, how should we proceed? David Wilcock, well, let's put it this way, whoever wrote this is praying that we are extremely, extremely stupid. This is like someone asking us to play Russian roulette while handing us the gun, knowing every chamber has a bullet, and saying you go first. The only way someone would sign this is if they didn't read it or understand what they were reading. CG, being that the NDA was far too restrictive, we declined the offer from Jack Smith. We had already received most of the same information from others who had betrayed this dark alliance. We had confirmed that these were operatives working on behalf of the Rothschild family, along with a handful of easy-to-manipulate individuals within the ufology community. Only two days after we rejected Jack Smith's offer, David had a very suspicious failure of the brakes on his car on Friday, August 11th. Very soon after his car had made it down the Topanga Mountains, the main cylinder went out. The brake pedal went straight to the floor with no grip. The car was still able to be driven to a local garage in Santa Monica for repairs. Then the very next morning, Saturday, August 12, I received a call at 6 a.m. on my cell phone. I answered it quickly, since my family was sleeping in the motel room with me. We were in the Pacific time zone, so the call that was local to Texas came quite early. It was a woman who identified herself as being with Child Protective Services in Collin County, Texas. She then began to tell me that they were responding to a complaint that I was a cult leader. They were told that my children were in imminent danger while in my care. I was completely caught off guard. I couldn't believe that this operation had gone this far. Whoever is doing this seems to feel they are completely immune from any consequences for committing these felony-level crimes. David came forward with information stating that he had been threatened by phone from a trusted insider on July 3, 2017. The insider had identified all major players in the Dark Alliance by name in this conversation, including three key individuals who are very public. He said they were all being paid to do this, and the operation was being organized and funded by the Rothschilds. David has a recording of the entire conversation. He will not release it unless forced to by law in a public trial, since he will never willingly betray any of his insiders. This insider also admitted to passing along information to people in the Dark Alliance firsthand. This included specific details of ancient ruins in Antarctica, which did then turn into a video exclusive. David was told that if he went along with the plan, he could be given money and made into a much more famous public figure potentially as big as Alex Jones. The very next day after David posted this three-part expose, Pete Peterson was attacked with a once-in-a-lifetime crushing blow. Every single thing Pete owns is now being stolen from him, including his former home. This was just two weeks after Pete appeared on Cosmic Disclosure to share a wealth of personal testimony that supported everything I have been saying about the secret space program, off-planet bases, the Draco Reptilian ETS, ancient motherships found under the ice in Antarctica, and so on. The dispute over Pete's house started back in 2009, when he lost his security clearance and government pension after coming forward as a whistleblower for Project Camelot. I have decided to release the first of a number of the Jack Smith emails. This will give the ufology community the opportunity to step back and evaluate what has transpired. We all need to decide if we will allow ourselves to be manipulated any longer. We have researched the true identity of Jack Smith. This person was also responsible for filing a false complaint with the UN. 
non-governmental organization that classifies groups as cults. He wanted to have me publicly castigated as a cult leader thanks to the Blue Avians' information. We hope that as this new phase of attacks unfolds, we can begin to drop more and more of the information we received. This will make the source of the attacks even more obvious. We also hope that as more people see what has occurred, they will realize that they were subjected to a mass psychological operation. We all need to come back to the Tent of Unity for some shared forgiveness and understanding. You can expect to see more articles and videos soon that will shed more information on this Rothschild attempt to foment a civil war in ufology. I also just passed along an important briefing about mass arrests being planned against cabal pedophiles. The briefing indicated that they have infested all different levels of the EU and US governments, right down to local judiciaries, police, and post offices. What we are seeing with Pete could be just one example that proves how this could actually be happening. There may be no other way to stop this except for the alliance to take military action. The cabal-controlled mass media would undoubtedly try to portray such an operation as an evil, revolutionary act. Join us at www.fulldisclosureproject.org in organizing a grassroots effort to demand a full disclosure of all suppressed technologies. We also intend to expose the crimes against humanity that have been perpetrated to keep these technologies secret. It is time that we get up off of our knees and realize that we are the saviors we have been waiting for. We are the Alliance. You are Disclosure. Corey Good. This is what whistleblowers have to go through to get the truth out here. The idea of the Blue Avian message being a cult is a joke. Just read the RA material The Law of One. They warn against this sort of thing, turning this movement into a cult or religion. They advocate everyone to exercise their own free will, and not to manipulate anybody else's free will. As for the emails I think the ones from Jack Smith and the independent non-government fact cult complaints are written by the same illiterate person. Based on the poor grammar in each letter. The fact one even begins with one writer and ends with another. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more thought-provoking content, and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Your support is greatly appreciated.